Hey, I'm Randy Palmer, and then for those of you maybe just uh, joined us, I'm Randy Palmer, and this is Coffee and Conversation, and our guest today is Brad Riley. Brad is an author, he's a minister, he's a counselor, he's a husband, and a father, and I throw that in there too, and it's just all around a good man, and um, he has written a book based out of his experiences in dealing with people and the thousands of funerals in which he has officiated and the title of the book is presence in the dark right you got a copy of that you can i do up. i do got a copy of it right here yeah, it says presence, presence in the dark finding okay. hope in death yes and uh we'll share some information with y'all at, towards the end of the broadcast about how you can where you can purchase that book where you can obtain that um you were saying that we talked about that the importance of you know why life what's life about uh, and the second mm-hmm. and again you can't discuss everything in the book we don't have that much time yeah. but um, yeah. talk about becoming what people need. And you can see on the screen there is mm-hmm. to be the gospel, not necessarily always to preach it. There are times, don't, I don't want anybody thinking we're not saying don't preach the gospel. Sure, absolutely, yeah. Understand that. If, if you know Brad very well, you will know that that is something that he does effectively and enjoys doing. Uh, Amen. So I misunderstand Amen. that. Thank the you. Third thing, and I love the um, I love the visual of this. You talked about removing the shroud of death. Mm, yeah. Talk to us a little bit about what, you, what you're saying there in your book. Well, death is the ultimate mystery. Um, you know, as humans, we're, we instinctively, human beings instinctively want to solve mysteries. Right. We want to solve the mysteries yeah. of science and the planet. I mean, it goes all the way back, you know, exploring the planet doing everything that we can do to make sure that uh, that we understand you know, we have this drive to understand mm-hmm. but yet the one thing we cannot do mm-hmm. is that we cannot reach beyond the grave and there's that ultimate wall that ultimate shroud that covers what can we know about that and when but i think we remove that shroud when we when we realize when we come to realize we, we stop fearing death because we know it's 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 the doorway we all have to pass through. It's the gateway to life as it was meant to be lived. And when we come to appreciate how, how right here, right now, we are loved by God for who we are because we are his creation and we carry his breath in our lungs. And we can begin to remove the shroud of death and find hope then in that death through the understanding that that what I said in the in the last segment, you know, God is too good to do wrong. He has a, he has, the scripture says, eye is not seen, ear is not heard. What God has in store for those who love him, you yes. know, and that, it's, it's going to be amazing. And, and so the way that shroud is removed, I, I think part of it is because, is, is through understanding, coming to grips with this. And there's a particular passage I, I have to share with you because I think, I think it's really key. Uh, this was like one of those epiphany moments uh, that, that in my life when I got this verse. Uh-huh. It's John chapter 5, 24. It's one of Jesus's, you know, truly, truly statements. And when he says truly, truly, you want to pay attention. Right. <laughs> yeah. And in John 5, 24, this is what he says. And he's speaking in the context of having a loved ones who have just died, you know, and, and friends who have just died. He says, truly, truly, I say to you that he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into death but has passed out of death and into life end quote what did jesus just say to us now i'm not an english major i i mess up my grammar all the time but but in every translation of the bible it is always the word has in every language greek anything it's It's present tense. He who believes has eternal life and does not come into death, but is passed out of death and into life. So really, when do we die? Really? It's not when the breath ceases in our lungs. It's when we believe and we have passed out of death and into life. And now death has no more power over us. There is no more shroud. There there is no more mystery. It's simply the doorway we must pass through and on the other side of that doorway is life and life abundant and life everlasting. Amen. It, it Amen. gets me, John's talking about it, it really does. It gets me excited. 
It, yeah, it's good. I mean, it, like, woo, you know, um, it, it, it changes the whole perspective of yeah. think about death. That, um, does it stop my suffering? You know, when I lose a, a loved one, does it, um, whatever. No, I'm still pain. No, and I, I'm still I, pain. You know, I still have some dreams and I wake up at night, you know, and, and things, but man, there's that. Oh, like you said, oh. and I was trying to think as you were talking about it, um, about some of the places I've been and some of the places other people go, where, you know, you have to go through all this kind of wild and craziness, um, yeah. not craziness, but the stuff, oh, I'm trying to think, man, it's, it, this in no way compares, but I, I think of how that, um, um, people who are, are, are running a race or someone who is preparing for an athletic event and you go through all kind of training. Yeah, you know, I used to think at my age, I'll look back, you know, sometimes and I think about what we did in football practice. Right. Like, what was I thinking? That was crazy. Who would want to do that? Yeah. So then, you know, then I then I, I think about or I, I get around some of my buddies and we start talking about the Friday nights and the games and all that excitement. Yeah. And you're like, Yes, it was all worth it. And it was all worth it. Yeah. I know that in no way compares to heaven and being with God. Right. right. But the fact of, yeah, death is just a, it's something we go through. And then, man, bam, mm -hmm. the other side. And mm -hmm. yes, uh, hey, could you, um, I said, um, Brad, that yeah. this trial, that's a great for me, a great visual. There may be some people, though, who may watch this that, they're like, okay, what's he talking about? What's a shroud? Could you kind of explain how that, you know, yeah. you know the shroud and, and, and where all that kind of comes from? Well, the sh a shroud is literally a burial cloth. Yeah, okay. it, it was it was in, in Jesus' day, uh, shrouds were put over the bodies. They were wrapped in a burial cloth. And the okay. bodies were sometimes anointed and preserved with, with some spices and things to cover the, the smell of death, if you will. But there was the shroud. And in the idea of the shroud, uh, they would mourn their loved one who was laying there in this shroud. Um, and, and you couldn't see the loved one anymore. Oh, yeah. I think even that is symbolic. We don't do that anymore. And I right. think even that is symbolic in, you know, I, when we come to a funeral and, and, a, and there's way more in the book that I wouldn't have time to go into now, but I, I think it's even important that we address the body and we see the body. This is our loved one. And this is, this is a part of who they were, just a part of who they were, mm -hmm. you know, and it's going to be a part of who they are again uh, on the resurrection day when God raises up all bodies, uh, you know, in the, in the last day. But for now, it's important. It's a part of that grief process to to recognize that that even though this this was part of our loved one, it's it's who we saw them as. Even and in that sense, even this body is like a shroud. Okay, yeah. right. It's a shroud right. of the real self yeah. underneath. Right. See? The yeah. real self is is the, the apostle Paul says it this way. He says in that second uh, the second Corinthian letter, chapter four, we have this treasure in jars of clay. Jars of clay break easily, but the treasure doesn't break. Exactly. He makes it real clear in that chapter yeah. that life is yeah. eternal. The treasure's not broken. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you said something just a, a little bit ago, Randy, that was very important. You know, even though, you know, I can write about trying to remove the shroud and understanding and embracing death as finding hope in it, the reality is it still hurts. Nothing's going to stop that. Right. Death is profound. It's it, the worst thing we can do when we we try to comfort our loved ones is, is, is to say, you know, it's going to be okay. Well, no, it's not going to be okay. Things are different. It's always going to be different, you know? So that's the worst thing we can hear, you know, at that point, that's where we need to be incarnational. We need to be what they need. And what they need is a shoulder to cry on a friend to love them and just accept where they're at. So the ministry of presence becomes everything at that point, you know, uh, you, I don't. I don't hand them the book right there yeah. and say, "Okay, now if you'll just read this, you you're going to be okay." Yeah. You know, that's for later on when I get get it back in their hands when they're yeah. when they had that moment uh, of mourn and time at loss. But there's so much to the shroud. It, it's it yeah. is in we've, it, it's only removed. It, it's like it's. I also love this. Paul talks a lot about shrouds in, in this he talks about the veil you'll remember in the corinthian letter also mm -hmm. i think it's in first corinthians I, I don't, i'm not always good with the the exact chapter and verse but but i know it's in there he talks about we all with unveiled faces look in a mirror and 
we should be seeing the glory of God, he says. A glory that's being changed from this glory into glory in an ever-increasing measure. And he uses the comparison of Moses. When Moses came down from the mountain, uh, you know, he had to veil his face because he shone with the glory of God and the people were like, that's too much for us. But now, God has removed the veil. God has removed the shroud. We are to shine with the light of Christ when we recognize what life is, who we are as his children, and and all he's done. He's removing the shroud all the time from us. And uh, and death is death is not a permanent shroud. It, it is we can remove that shroud and we can em, we can learn to embrace death. Amen. Um, Amen. Look, Brad, thank you for the insights you have shared with us. I, I mean, I am grateful for that. Um, it's encouraged me. It's helped me. Awesome. Uh, as a person who has been through grief, um, as a minister, as someone who cares about other people, and I have friends who are grieving, and, and I want to be able to help them. Just to reiterate, um, we'll talk, in your book, you'll talk about why are we here? What is life? You'll talk about the fact of becoming incarnation, becoming what people need. Mm -hmm. and the third thing uh, that you'll talk about is removing the shroud of death. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you, uh, those of you who are watching this, thank you for taking the time to watch. If you have some questions, um, you can comment on there or you can contact Brad. Brad, you can find him at Brad Riley. Let me type this in here for you. Make sure I spell it right. I misspelled uh, here. Well, I didn't misspell here earlier. Um, if you can contact Brad, you can contact myself. I encourage you to check him out, Brad Riley Ministries. You can obtain his book there or on Amazon. Thank you. If someone you know would benefit from watching this, please share that with them. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, a like. Um, pray for Brad. Pray for myself. Yes, please. Any of this journey. And thank you again, uh, everybody, for taking time out to watch this. God bless you. In the words of G Money, that's my dad, in case you didn't know, Brad. <laughs> Uh, keep on keeping on, man. We'll see y'all next time. Awesome. Thank you, Randy. Great Bye, being with you. All right. Bye.